Welcome to Rob Schmidt tonight. This afternoon, the president's son, Hunter, was indicted on three gun charges related to using drugs while either applying to get a gun or while having a gun. It was a big moment, and something very unusual happened when we got this indictment handed down. The Biden-aligned media exploded and began covering the story wall to wall. Members of the Democrat Party quickly jumped on TV and responded to the indictment. People who have spent years actively concealing and marginalizing one of the biggest corruption stories that this country has ever seen, for some reason, could not wait to legitimize a three-count indictment against Hunter Biden, one of the people they've been protecting, and scream it from the mountaintops. It was really weird to watch, to be honest. Here's what today sounded like as the D.C. machine erupted. That plea deal crumbled, and now we're seeing an indictment. I think it's reasonable to presume we have not heard the last of charges against the uh, president's son. A plea deal that would have resolved misdemeanor tax crimes and felony gun charge collapsed in court. Hunter Biden um, has now been handed an indictment from a Delaware federal grand jury. Even ABC and NBC broke into programming. It was almost like Trump got a parking ticket or something. If you've been paying attention, it's very easy to see what's happening, though, in this moment. The machine is blasting this story so hard because this is all by design. The one crime Hunter Biden has committed that had nothing to do with his father is being pursued by U.S. Attorney David Weiss for a very obvious reason. The Department of Justice, which was caught red-handed concealing Biden's corruption, shoving him into the White House in 2020, is trying to fool us into trusting them again. And sadly, what we saw today is going to work on probably millions of people in this country. But it's not going to work on all of us. Remember, Hunter has been investigated for five years. And David Weiss tried to give Hunter Biden a no-jail plea deal over the summer. But IRS whistleblowers and an honorable judge blew up his plans. Weiss let the very serious tax charges that would have gone to Hunter Biden expire because those led to Hunter's father. He's not going after Hunter for operating as a foreign agent, which could be years in prison, because that charge also leads to Hunter's father. But the gun charges lead nowhere. And they're all hoping you don't really realize that. Listen to a CNN host today during the network's hours of nonstop coverage of today's news. They really, really wanted to push this out. The host is somber in tone and basically scolding anyone who had the audacity to believe that the DOJ was somehow pro-Biden and partisan against Trump. Allegations of politics is right, uh, often coming from the former president himself uh, in terms of uh, what they say is a two-tier justice system. But here you have it, as we noted, first time in U.S. history the son of a president has been charged by the Justice Department. Yes, allegations of a two-tier justice system. But as you can see, the system is honest. See? It's honest. Ignore the fact that David Weiss sat on very serious tax charges for years, long enough just to let them expire so he didn't have to try to put Hunter Biden in prison. Ignore the fact he tried to end a massive political bribery criminal scandal and make it disappear with a no-jail plea deal over a gun charge. Clearly, everything is on the up and up. You can trust him now. Jamie Raskin sent the same message today. He couldn't wait to jump on TV. Usually he'd run away from a story that was bad for the Bidens, but not this one. It tells you everything you need to know. You could feel the undertones in his statement. Justice is still blind in this country, Raskin intended to say. The DOJ's efforts to imprison the leading 2024 candidate are totally legit. It's not partisan at all that we're trying to throw Trump in jail. It can't be partisan. See, they're indicting Joe Biden's son. I don't think people should applaud the system when it works for Hunter Biden, but then try to tear the system down when it works for Donald Trump. I mean, both of them have been, been indicted on various charges. The presumption of innocence operates for both of them. Due process rights operate for both of them. And, um, you know, we shouldn't take delight in other people's misfortunes, but we have to have a rule of law. Mm -hmm. Sure we do, Jamie. Hunter's defense attorney put out this statement. As expected, prosecutors filed charges today that they deemed were not warranted just six weeks ago following a five-year investigation into this case. That's Hunter's attorney. It doesn't make sense to him. 
just like it doesn't make sense to the rest of us. At least we can agree on one thing. It's too obvious. Now, there is anticipation that Weiss could bring minor tax charges against Hunter in D.C. and California. That is back on the table and being talked about. Charges the DOJ rejected initially, part of their obstruction of the Hunter investigation. But even that move is small potatoes. Remember, they let the big tax charges go. This is failing to pay taxes on time. You can see how Hunter might skirt out of this with no jail time, just like he's going to skirt out of the gun thing with no jail time. For a man who brought in a fortune doing corrupt international dealing, paying no taxes on the money in 2014 and 2015 when they brought in loads of cash, that's Hunter Biden, and only got away with it because, as I said, David Weiss simply ran out the clock. But we're supposed to trust Weiss now, right? After he spent the last three months covering for the people who obstructed his investigation? Right. Now we trust you. Now, keeping in mind that Donald Trump was impeached immediately by Democrats for sniffing around into Joe Biden's corruption in Ukraine, something the party knew was legit, let's watch some of CNN from last night. I rarely play clips from Anderson Cooper because the show is so boring, I'm afraid you're going to fall asleep or change the channel. But last night was a real beauty. Cooper had Pelosi on. And he starts off talking about the irony that Trump's first impeachment was over his outrageous attempt to smear Biden as corrupt by asking Ukraine's president to investigate what we now know is Biden's clear corruption in Ukraine. Here is how Nancy Pelosi responded. An it's most unfortunate because impeachment is something that our founders put in the Constitution. They foresaw that there could be a rogue executive, a president. With President Trump, it was very clear that he had engaged in act actions and activity in that phone call that really were a... Yeah. <laughs> you mean actions and activity that threatened your candidate in 2020? That's what you really mean. It was very clear, she says, that Trump committed an impeachable offense by pointing to corruption by his opponent that his own DOJ was ignoring because they wanted to oust him from the presidency. Let's point out that Pelosi and Democrats in Congress had one whistleblower, Alexander Vindman. That was it. And they launched a no-vote impeachment inquiry immediately. Immediately. In this case, Republicans have stacks of evidence of corruption, multiple whistleblowers, loads of bank records from some of the biggest banks in the world. Hunter Biden's own emails, his own text messages, his own voice messages. And with all that, here's how Anderson Cooper puts the case against the Bidens. Despite months of investigation, the Republicans have yet to find any evidence That's right. in implicating then Vice President Biden in his, uh, in his son's affairs. Is, um, I mean, McCarthy is saying this is just an inquiry. Is it inevitable that it will be an impeachment? Well, I, I think that really is more of a... a um matter of the politics of the Republican caucus. You have to impeach the president or else we're going to vacate the chair of speaker. You can't, you have to shut down government or else we're going to vacate the chair of speaker. This is not responsible governance, but it's the chaos on the Republican side. <laughs> you know how hard it is? I mean, to just get lied to this much, to just, just to be consistently always lied to, it's so hard to watch. This is why you don't watch CNN. You have to be really stupid to watch CNN. No evidence at all, they say, and they're going to die on this hill, along with their credibility. Just as bad over at the New York Times, moving the goalposts dramatically again. It wasn't that long ago the New York Times would not even report allegations of Biden corruption. They wouldn't even touch it. Now they're admitting that Biden was engaged in Hunter's multi-million dollar influence peddling schemes, but... Now they say, well, it's, it's not a big deal because it wasn't his idea. And Joe only did it because he's such a good father and he's such a great guy that he just didn't know how to say no to his son. This is from the New York Times. Biden's devotion to his son means that he has long followed Hunter's lead. See, they're trying to make it now seem like it was Hunter's scheme. Allies of the president have deep respect for the bond, but have privately criticized Mr. Biden's apparent inability to say no when Hunter sought to pull him into his business dealings. Oh, jeez.